let's you know presume someone's been diagnosed with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease you know they're under the care of their physician and and one of the things that the physician recommends is to lose weight sounds simple right sure. <laughs> but we know that it's it's much more complicated than that and i know that you've looked over all of the research in this space the various interventions and tools that are available to um, that have been tried to to help people lose weight where's your head at today if someone was to say to you okay i want to lose some weight what are the intervention strategies that are available to me that i could think about whether that's in isolation or or combination of of kind of different tools to help um, promote an energy deficit and help them lose sufficient weight to get their non-alcoholic fatty liver disease into what we would call remission or reversal. Yeah, it's you know starting again with with the broadest possible recommendation, which is that we know that energy restriction, energy, and achieving an energy deficit can have quite profound effects on on reducing the amount of fat in the liver um you know there's there's reductions as a relative reduction in 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 the level of fat in the liver of of up to 45 percent could be potentially achieved with a weight loss of seven percent of 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 initial body weight um and so you know, at the broadest level, I think you would really be, you know, trying to to shift someone to thinking less about the type of diet necessarily that would allow them to do that, and more the type of diet they can particularly do, uh, or they would be um, able to use to achieve that outcome, and and focusing less on the actual. Uh, kind of content of of the diet, you don't typically see, you know, much um, by way of 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 difference in the potential reduction in liver fat from energy restricted diets between, say, for example, low carbohydrate and low fat diets in that kind of manipulation over a longer term. That said. There is some interesting evidence of quite significant short-term effects of carbohydrate restriction, and some of these uh, intervention trials, you know, in as little as as one week, um, you know, have 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 shown quite significant reductions in intrahepatic triglycerides in the level of fat in the liver uh, over over uh, over short-term periods. So there is there is that potential kind of nuance within the hypocaloric studies um such that you can get an almost more immediate reduction in the level of fat in the liver uh in a very short term sense with within 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 one a period of one week with carbohydrate restriction and that over the longer term uh, that that effect is is kind of no longer different. So so that could be a strategy, but it's not one that would be required uh, where someone to to simply maintain their energy restricted diets over a longer period of time. Okay, so the first point there that you made was you can reduce your liver fat by this is relative terms. So you've got a starting amount of liver fat. You can reduce that liver fat by about 45% if you lose 7%, around 7% of your body weight. And if we're thinking about an 80 kilogram person, that's five to six, five and a half kilograms, somewhere in that ballpark. And what you're saying is rather than there being a definitive diet, to point to step one is for someone to kind of find some sort of approach that works for them in that they can adhere to it. And, you know, you'll hear people talk about counting calories, you know, that Roy Taylor 
is using the the kind of very low calorie diet that you mentioned before sort of meal replacement shakes i think which are about 600 calories a day and then i think he says eat vegetables for the other 200 calories so people are eating 800 calories a day for about two weeks up to a month and then they go into a more of a kind of weight st stable stability kind of uh, phase where they eat healthfully but more towards weight maintenance and then they might repeat that is my understanding a few different times or a few cycles um, but you've got counting calories you've got uh, you could go low carb like you just said then um there's low fat there's uh you know all of these different types of i guess dietary restriction where you're either changing the macronutrient contribution or you're removing food groups pescatarian <laughs> vegetarian plant-based these are all kind of the same or different tools to achieve the same thing which is some type of energy deficit um, and then the other one that, that gets thrown up that I'd be interested to hear from you on is time restricted eating. Do you think that has a, a place for certain people to help them consume less calories and, and get into a kind of hypocaloric state? Um, potentially I, I, I think like most people, I, I found some of the early human interventions on time restricted eating to be interesting um, and potentially promising uh that would have been in 2018 i think if we fast forward to 2023 uh i don't think that promise is necessarily there anymore i don't think when we move the hyperbole aside and we kind of forget some of the um it, what remain more kind of speculative potential circadian mechanisms that might explain uh some of the 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 time restricted eating of effects or were were offered to I, I just don't think there's anything that unique going on with time restricted eating I don't think that the evidence supports almost any real benefit to an extended fasting period i don't know that that's in i think we've multiple interventions now in in the last two years that have compared a time restricted eating protocol to general caloric restriction uh, energy restriction there's there's almost no you know superiority demonstrated to the time restricted eating protocols i think there still are some in do you think it needs to be superior for it to have utility. And I say that just thinking that people struggle to adhere with all sorts of things. So calorie restriction or counting calories adherence isn't going to be great. So it could be that at an, at an individual level, um, it, it acts as another option for someone to who's not going well with counting calories to still you know achieve the same kind of level it might not be superior but the same amount of weight loss simply by you know restricting the time that they're eating yeah i i think that's all we can say about it at this point it it is if if a give if an individual finds that restricting the time every day in which they eat uh whether they do that by say delaying their first meal by 90 minutes and bringing dinner forward by 90 minutes however they decide to compress their eating period if that is something that allows an individual to consume less calories then that would be uh, an effective strategy for that individual um but i don't think that there is any unique additional benefit that would be derived um you know in terms of achieving that uh you know and again we're, we're talking about all of these options in the context of hypocaloric dieting right restricting energy intake um if if there's actually anything that does suggest a potential interesting effect maybe additive to hypocaloric energy intake it's 
it's the number of uh kind of um small small interventions that have well that's more in the context of putting fat into the liver no no there's there is some interesting research on very low carb ketogenic diets um and in the context of hypocaloric dieting uh you know there was a a paper by a group in finland that do a huge amount of 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 this uh research which looked at like a 1400 calorie a day diet less than 25 grams per day carbohydrate 64% fat so it's a ketogenic dietary intervention decreased liver fat by 31% in 6 days body weight lowered by 3% in that time frame and while while this um did reflect fat oxidation uh, so they used stable isotope tracers to understand that so yes there was this there was this breakdown of of the triglyceride in the liver and this shuttling of those fatty acids into uh into ketone production specifically there's also a potential effect of 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 this diet on liver volume because it really depletes liver glycogen levels now do i think that that's a superior approach not really because they're they're very short term i think in someone who's particularly high risk needs to get a lot of fat out of the liver quite quickly that could be an approach but i think those i think those studies need to be replicated in in, in larger sample sizes what's the control alan there was 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 there a control diet? I think I think you said fourteen hundred calories. Did they look at a fourteen hundred hypercaloric diet that had higher carbohydrates in that study? No, no, no. There, there, there wasn't a control group. It was a direct intervention. So that's the limitation of of the study. And when we do have some of the more head to head comparisons, um, you know, there was there was another another study that looked at around a one thousand calorie a day diet. Um, and compared a kind of low carb diet, ten uh, percent carbohydrate, seventy five percent fat, and a low fat diet, twenty percent fat, sixty percent carbohydrate. Protein was the same, fifteen percent to both. And they started the study um, with a kind of inpatient metabolic study, uh, and then the participants were following the diets for for eleven weeks. And what you saw was that the low carbohydrate intake decreased um, to a greater extent in the very immediate, uh, you know, kind of 48 hours of the metabolic inpatient study, but over 11 weeks. Hepatic fat, decreased hepatic fat, yeah. Decreased hepatic fat. But over 11 weeks, there was no difference between between the diets. Um there was actually a, a slight trend towards, I don't like using that term, but, you know, there's a, a slight trend towards a greater reduction in the low fat group. But basically both groups had a relative reduction of, of, of liver fat of 50% over that 11 weeks. So, so I think when we think about the available evidence over those kind of longer term periods, while the short term studies are interesting and there could be a utility to them, you know, it could it could be that, you know, that they're used as this kind of immediate jolt before transitioning to a more, you know, kind of balanced or mixed diet that might be more uh, amenable to longer term real world adherence. Um, ultimately, it really does come back to to the need to to just create uh, an energy deficit. Um, I mean, in the context of you know, you've mentioned the the type of dietary setup that Roy Taylor's group have used from direct and now the retune study. You know, that doesn't that doesn't aim for any specific, you know, ketogenic or 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 low fat composition because it doesn't need to. The restriction on energy intake per se is the most fundamental component and the most important component to that to that dietary intervention. That's really where the the weight of evidence would lie in the context of lowering fat out of the liver as well. Mm-hmm.